All right, now we got case three, and this is a 50-year-old man with multiple linear papules on the right shoulder and arm for many years. Man, if only every case came with that kind of very detailed history. I love it. And I can't remember what history this actually came with, but I, I know what the actual history is after subsequently finding out, and so I've, I've uh, made it more detailed for teaching purposes. Um, okay, any, um, any takers on this really fascinating case? Excellent. I love that description of these, these multiple nodules. We do have an excision. I think this was taken out by a surgeon. One clue is we can see this is cautery effect on the collagen. So you often see cautery in the epidermis and, and get you know quizzed about that, I think, where the nuclei of the epithelial cells stretch out and get elongated. But it's also important to recognize cautery in the collagen. You get these burned, destroyed edges, and then the collagen next to it is like blurred and smudgy compared to you know the nice crisp pink uh, normal collagen. So most of the dermatologists that I have worked with do not use cautery regularly to remove, or, or a cautery a slash electrosurgery, bovi, whatever name you want, electrical current to cut. They may cauterize things after they've removed something, but I don't usually see any of this cautery um, or electrical current effect in things removed by dermatologists. So I do cheat a little bit, but when I see this, I know a surgeon probably removed this, uh, or, or a non-dermatologist probably removed it, okay? So the uh, other thing is that I love that you described that we've got a basaloid nodules, multiple little circumscribed nodules that are basaloid. They have appearance that gives you the feeling of a hamartomatous process and, and potentially something that has follicular differentiation because you can see um, that there are these kind of cords that are like pink keratinocytes with little keratin horn cysts or almost like little pearls or horn cysts here mostly of orthokeratin. And then you also see little blue basaloid buds, particularly out here along the periphery that reminds you of the germinative hair roots of, of a hair follicle. And so all those things together call to mind a benign follicular thing. So if we put all of those together, we come up with the name. This is a basaloid follicular hamartoma. And this is a great case because this patient had this, uh, this very unique presentation of multiple papules in one region of the body that were in a kind of linear um, Blaschkoid sort of uh, fashion, growth in a linear um, uh, arrangement along Blaschko's lines. And, um, and so this is one presentation that you can see. Basaloid follicular hamartoma comes in multiple different flavors, so to speak. One of those is that you just see them as solitary uh, lesions. The other time you can see them are there's familial syndromic forms, and then there's acquired forms. And one of the forms that I believe is thought to be acquired is this form, linear multiple basaloid follicular hamartoma. And this case stands out to me in my mind as the gold standard of what a basaloid follicular hamartoma looks like because the patient had this very unique presentation that fits well with this and not, say, basal cell carcinoma. And also this patient, it turns out, had had a previous biopsy of one of these lesions like 10 years before that was also called basaloid follicular hamartoma and never ended up having progressive growth or destructive you know, 
um, uh, just locally destructive, aggressive growth like you would expect the basal cell that's neglected for a long time to do. So that is nice. And so sometimes we see these as little tiny foci incidentally around hair follicles in normal skin. And I don't even usually mention them. Sometimes you get these biopsied. And when they're a solitary lesion in an older sun damaged person, you can really begin to wonder, should I call it basal or follicular hematoma, Or do I call it uh, basal cell carcinoma, the infundibulocystic type, or basically basal cell carcinoma with follicular differentiation. And there's lots of controversy and debate over that and over whether or not this represents a benign process or if it represents a form of basal cell carcinoma when it's solitary. When we have it here in this kind of linear arrangement, I think it's pretty clear that this is a, a benign hamartoma. Um, but you, when you see single lesions like this, sometimes people will call them basal cell infundibulo cystic type. So there's it, just like everything in Dermpath, there's lots of debate among different experts. And particularly, I think when you get into a Nexel, um, uh, you know, and hair follicle tumors, you get lots of different strong opinions about these things. Okay. So this one I like because I actually know based on the clinical that this is behaving in a benign fashion and is presenting as a benign hematoma. So that's the features all nicely laid out here. And another thing I had from a case that I saw um, as a solitary lesion, I'll show you, it was a solitary pedunculated lesion. And I think you can tell it looks very, very similar to that case I just showed you. Um, uh, so here we have a, uh, the same kind of pattern as we had previously. And in this case, um, I actually did, it's a slightly more stranded looking. And there's also a little bit of keratin derived amyloid, which you can see in basal cell carcinomas and a variety of adnexal tumors um, and seborrheic keratosis, et cetera. There's little clumps of keratin that get together and make pink uh, smudgy stuff that have cracks in between. And then look what I did here. I did a cytokeratin 20 immunostain. So these are Merkel cells, benign Merkel cells that are just hanging out. They're like on the, on the train for the ride, just along for the ride colonizing this process. In general, my kind of thinking is that uh, it, when you have a basaloid neoplasm and you're debating between hair follicle, benign hair follicle tumor versus basal cell carcinoma, when you have abundant scattered benign Merkel cells that are in the lesion highlighted by CK20, that that favors a benign follicular process rather than a basal cell carcinoma. Now, there's plenty of debate about that. And there have been tumors that people have described that are obviously invasive or more aggressive that can have some Merkel cells in them. So it's, you know, just like everything, nothing is a perfect, perfect solution to the problems that we face in pathology. But I find this very reassuring and helpful when I think something is a benign follicular tumor and then I do CK20 and there's multiple scattered uh, Merkel cells in it. To me, that's a reassuring point to favor basal follicular hamartoma or trichoepithelioma or trichoblastoma. Doesn't seem to work for trichelemoma, I think, because it's made of a different part of the of the hair follicle. But in any case, um, you can you can go and do more reading about this because again, like I said, there's controversy here. But this is my approach. So this lesion right here, I call this basaloid follicular hamartoma benign. All right, and that, to me, it looks very very similar to that last case that we saw, that one that was linear and multiple. But I think some people might call this a infundibular cystic basal cell, and I I can understand that that there might be different approaches. So. That's just my approach. Let's see. I can go back to the. Okay. Okay. So that's it. Basal follicular hematoma, the linear uh, multiple form of it. Any questions? Chat. Would you rely on burrup or BCL2 to favor basal? So no, I wouldn't, um, because I feel like so burrup will stain both um, follicular neoplasms, like well at least trichoeps and trichoblastomas, and I believe it would be positive here as well as basal cell. It's a relatively non-specific stain. I find it helpful sometimes to help me between basal cell carcinoma and AK, like a little superficial basal, sometimes can mimic actinic keratosis. Uh, Burrep can help there. I find it helpful if I've got an ugly basaloid tumor, and I think it's just an ugly basal, but I want to make sure it's not a squame. If Burrep has got a lot of staining there, that would be a point to support basal. Although again, it's, it's a pretty non-specific stain. You can get some staining and squame or other things sometimes. But in hair follicle tumors, although some people have described some differences in the pattern of BCL2 and BRAP, I feel like it's, to me, too subtle to be able to confidently sort out. So most of the time in that, in, in all of the uh, hair follicle versus basal cell, I usually just use H&E. Sometimes I supplement it with CK20. There have been studies about a stain called FLADA1, or that's how I pronounce it, P-H-L-D-A-1, which will stain benign follicular things like trichoep and be negative in basal cells, I believe. Let me double check to make sure I always get that confused because I don't actually use it. 
um, in my practice. I've never had a lab that had access to it regularly. So, um, pause. yes, the, the trichoeps are positive and basal cells are negative, at least in some small studies that have been done. So it sounds like a good marker, but I've not actually had a chance to use it yet. But I find that a lot of those other markers like BURAP and BCL2 are too, to me, pattern reliant. And I feel like pattern things where I have to say, well, it's more at the edges than in the center. To me, I find it really hard to use those to really nail down a diagnosis any better than I would do on H&E. So, so I don't personally, but I'm sure there are some other people that use them and, and find them very helpful. Okay, we'll move on to the next, the next case here.